example, uh, a new spree of the kind of speculative behavior that got us in trouble last time. Secondly, we said in 2007 and 2008, if they're too big to fail, they're too big to exist. They should be broken up, reduced in size if we're to have a safe and stable financial market. Instead, we got Dodd-Frank, which is, you know, uh, 2,000 pages of unwritten regulations that have been lobbied to death in the rulemaking process. And we end up with what I believe are banks that are not only too big to fail, but they're obviously too big to manage. How could mm -hmm. you have a hundred billion right. dollars worth of settlements and fines and penalties that have been applied so far to the six biggest banks in the United States? It's not just JP Morgan. It's Bank America. Mm -hmm. It's Citi. It's the whole uh, lot of the big banks uh, that I think are a clear and present danger as we go forward. Mr. Stockman, if you believe uh, and you postulate that you know mistake after mistake has been made, especially with the, with QE one, two, three, in uh, in succession, does that does the current interest rate uh, trajectory does that set us up for another 08, or do we have enough backstops and separations uh, to prevent that from occurring again? No, I think we're set up for another uh, 08. Uh, we uh, obviously have the same speculative excess going on today, the same incipient bubbles that we saw developing in 206 and 207. I mean, look at the stock market today. It's trading at 20 times trailing S&P 500 earnings. That's high given the headwinds that are facing uh, the world economy and the U.S. economy. It's trading the, uh, you know, the Russell 2000, which is the more speculative index is trading at 40 times trailing earnings. Mm -hmm. We have the junk bond market at an all-time high in terms of volume. We're back again to covenant light. We're back again to, uh, you know, sort of leveraged recaps uh, that are just piling more debt on top of already uh, indebted companies. So I think all the same mm -hmm. signs, including the speculation that's back in the housing market, you know, the busted housing market markets in California and Arizona and Florida uh, are now back uh, on a speculative boil as a result of all this cheap institutional Wall Street money that has flowed in uh, in, again, uh, a speculative endeavor, not any kind okay. of basic sustainable healing. So I think we're okay. set up for another big fall. Mm -hmm. And this time, it's hard to figure how the Fed can print any more money than it is already right. or drive interest rates any lower than zero, since I think uh, we're at the uh, bottom uh, bound. The initial jobless claims are near six-year lows and existing home sales are near three-year highs. What's not to like? So, guys, we're watching whether or not there is a taper, the taper amount, and the mix of the taper at the meeting tomorrow. Back to you. All right, let's pick on uh, David Stockman's mind again, former director of OMB under uh, Ronald Reagan. Uh, Mr. Stockman, so, I mean, we just heard a, uh, a whole laundry list of probability, of probable outcomes. Uh, Janet Yellen seems to be the runaway odds on favorite to head the Fed. She's known for being a dove. So what you already outlined as mistake after mistake looks like we're going to keep patting the mistakes on top of those mistakes. Yes, I think you're right. Uh, Yellen appear, appears to be a done deal. Uh, I think she will be just as bad as Bernanke, if not worse, and uh, uh, even Greenspan. Uh, we are just going in the wrong direction when we uh, basically cripple the financial markets and we don't allow interest rates to reflect the price of risk and to reflect uh, real information about the future. The entire trading dynamic and momentum today in the markets is simply trading the next word cloud, the next injection of liquidity from mm -hmm. the Fed and that has crippled and uh, you know maimed these markets. They don't work and as a result we're going to have the spectacle that you're going to see tomorrow and next month and the, the month after as the Fed tries to get out of this massive corner into which it's painted itself. You know, we're in the fifth year of this recovery, so-called, since June 2009, right. and they still have mm -hmm. massive stimulus being injected into the market. The real Main Street economy is barely limping along. Basically, mm -hmm. quantitative easing has been a wonderful boon for the 1%. It's caused the markets right. to soar, but it's not helped mm -hmm. the real economy.
Okay, Mr. Stockman, let's fast forward here. I mean, if years of this hasn't, if, if three repeats, uh, uh, you know, one, the, if QE and two iterations haven't done the job, there's got to be a way out of this, or, 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 is the, or is the American economy condemned to, you know, seven plus percent inflation? Is that going to be the new baseline from now on? Uh, and, you know, very, very tepid at best growth, one to two percent if you're lucky. Is that what the country is consigned to? Yes, it's not only what we can look forward to, it's what we've had for the last 13 years. People don't seem to recognize that notwithstanding Greenspan's uh, effort to stimulate and restart the economy after the dot-com bust, and then, of course, we got the housing bubble and bust and uh, the stock market meltdown in 2008, and then all of the man maneuvers that have gone on uh, under the Bernanke Fed, the fact is, since the year 2000, the peak then, the GDP of the United States has grown at an average of 1.7% a year for 13 years, the lowest rate of growth in recorded history. It's even much lower than we had during the 13 years after the 1929 crash. So our economy is structurally impaired. It's in big trouble. And all of this monetary stimulation, all of this zero interest rate policy, is not helping the economy grow. It is not creating jobs. Real uh, mm -hmm. median household income is down 8% uh, from where it was in the year 2000. And so I think we're just on the wrong track, but unfortunately we're stuck in this kind of policy warp because the stock market will have a violent, vicious hissy fit uh, if they ever stop uh, the monetary injections. And that's the dilemma that we're in today. Oh. Day, and that's why tapering is going to be the greatest trauma uh, to uh, hit the financial markets in modern times, in my judgment. Oh, boy. That's scary, Mr. Stockman. <laughs> Sounds like America's stuck on Band-Aids. Great talking to you. We'll make a date soon, okay? David Stockman, former OMB director, under then-President Ronald Wilson Reagan.